Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. On today's video I want to talk about what is the best fence post to use for pastured pigs. And by best, I mean not only the strongest, but the most economical and most efficient. So uh, let's get this discussion going. Shh. So with our pig operation, make sure that's not hot, that one's supposed to be turned off. With our pig operation we have uh, usually just a single strand of electric uh, that goes around our, our woodlot pasture and works fine. Uh, the pigs stay in, not a problem. Obviously, if you've seen some of the recent videos, we've had to train them to that, but once they're trained, they're good to go. Nobody's broken out in weeks. Uh, so just a simple single strand, and you can see here, we're only um, you know, eight, 10 inches off the ground, so my posts don't have to be super tall. They just need to be able to accommodate one strand or two, and again, the height is inconsequential, unless I decide to put ruminants or something else in here, but that ain't happening anytime soon. All right, so uh, as you guys know, if you've been with the channel, been looking at expanding our pastures through the woods. Um, so trying to figure out what's the most economical and what's the most efficient post. Now, in full disclosure, I would normally always go to a T post. Uh, they're expensive, but they never let you down, and, uh, and they're a nice, consistent post. Now, obviously, in light of what's going on in the world, and what's going on in my business that I want to be much more efficient in my expenses. I want to reduce cost uh, simply because of uh, you know, just trying to be better prepared. So looking at that, it was just obviously a logical time to do an assessment, say, well, which really is the best post with what I'm trying to do in the woods? So I want to identify the, the posts that I'm considering using and then discuss the costs associated with those. And I've got my little notes here. I've done my research locally. Now, again, this is our region. You guys may see prices differ. But um, the first option and the cheapest option we have are these fiberglass step-in posts. You guys have seen those. They're, what is that, four feet, three and a half feet. Uh, got a little metal spike. The rest of it's all plastic. Uh, you got to whack somebody with this. It breaks off. Don't ask me how I know. Uh, these little tabs, um, they get brittle and break off. So I have a bunch of these that the bottom tabs are broken off, so there's only a, a certain place that I can use these and it'd be efficient. Um, these guys are $1.49 a piece, and I found that price at our local Rural King. That's the cheapest uh, that I've been able to find it. So I would not build an entire pasture with this, this post. It's just not going to handle the tension that you need. Um, you know, when a deer goes blasting through the fence and gets it around its uh, feet, it's going to break these off and you'll have fence wire everywhere. So I wouldn't rely on these. I like these guys for fillers or just kind of helping to either lift the fence or lower the fence in a certain spot. But they are inexpensive. The second is this 3 8 inch rebar step-in post. And they have this little tab on it here as you drive it into the ground. It just helps it from wallowing out, kind of displaces some dirt there. Uh, these require, of course, an insulator that screws on, specialty insulator that screws on to rebar. This is 3 8 uh, what was it, 4 feet, yeah, 48 inches. And uh, those are kind of handy. So those are a little more heavy duty than these. Uh, of course, a little bit more expensive, $1.69, I found the cheapest at Tractor Supply. Um, you know, a deer's still going to bend this over, <laughs> believe it or not. I've seen that happen. And uh, then, of course, like I said, you need those custom insulators, so that's an additional cost. Uh, those, I've discovered, are $0.28 cents a piece, if you do the math on that. Buy them in bags of 25 The um, The next cheapest, believe it or not, is the T-Post. And again, this is a 6-foot T-Post, but you can buy a 5-footer. And that's what I usually use on the pig pasture. 6-footers were left over from our chicken pasture effort, so that's why I have those. I know you can even get 8-foot in... in get crazy if you wanted to but the smallest you can get and still actually be a true t-post in my understanding is um, five foot so those i found those at rural king for three dollars and 19 cents a piece and you know with those of course you've got the clip-on insulators here like uh, like i've got so you've got the specialty insulator just for the t-posts all kinds of different options very popular um, fence post option can really accommodate you know deer's not going to bend that unless it just slams right into it it's not like it's going to hit the wire and cause this thing to bend or break breaks off the insulators but doesn't damage the post um so interestingly enough uh, and still looking uh, some of you guys had suggested in some of the other videos going back and looking at rebar and say hey troy don't spend the money on this buy rebar you don't have to have the little fancy uh, plate here and just use your rebar to drive into the ground and put your screw on insulators well, believe it or not, that's not necessarily the most economical solution. So rebar, when you buy it just in these, you know, if you buy it in pre-cut lengths, I did some 
I did some checking on that on all the box stores, wherever you can buy rebar. A four-foot section of three-eighths inch rebar is $3.27. So it's eight cents more expensive than the T-post, <laughs> the five-foot T-post, which uh, is a little ridiculous. So, of course, you naturally go, well, don't buy pre-cut, buy bigger. So I looked at 10-foot rebar. is $6.20, um, or $3.10, if you do the math, per four-foot length. You buy a 10-foot long piece of rebar, and you want four-foot pieces out of it, you obviously have two left over. So really, you get two five-footers out of it, because you're not going to waste the two. And that makes that $3.10 a piece, so just barely cheaper than a, a T-post. Really where that would become efficient is if you bought a 20-foot piece of rebar, and if you wanted four-footers, then you could get five pieces of a post out of that one 20-foot piece of rebar. And the 20-footer is $8.70, which takes it down to $2.18 per four-footer. So that's where it starts to make sense, you know, using a 3 8 piece of rebar, but transporting a 20-foot long piece of rebar isn't the easiest thing to do. I've got a 16-foot trailer, and it still would require four feet of that to hang over. So not the easiest to uh, transport. And then, of course, you got to do all the cutting. you got to cut those guys down. Not a big now, if you really wanted to drop some coin, then we could get into the wooden posts. So we could get into the locust. Now, again, there's nobody that I know around here that sells locust posts. We'd have to go over into Ohio or uh, central Kentucky to buy that. But this is locust that I've cut off my property. You can see this is crooked as a dog's hind leg. But um, these guys get expensive. And then when you get into the treated posts, uh, depending on the diameter that you want, uh, then they get really expensive. We're looking at $8 plus uh, for treated, uh, just the standard, uh, I think they're uh, six inch diameter. And then when you get to the eight inch diameter, then you're really talking some serious uh, dollars there. But you know, $8 a post for a basic, um, basic treated post. So I, I know a lot of you guys use the uh, the hog netting or the poultry netting. This is poultry netting, of course, and that's hot. Um, and, of course, they make the hog netting. Premier One, all those other guys make the smaller hog netting. While that's efficient in a pasture setting, and by pasture, you know, flat, green, grassy area, um, my experience is you try to run these things through the woods with you know, limbs falling, with all the uneven ground, especially in our hillsides, that... A, you're going to have a hard time keeping it from grounding out. B, a limb can take it out and damage it pretty quickly. And C, it just, it just requires so much length. We're talking about running almost up to a quarter mile of electric fence for just one of our paddocks that we want to build here in the woods. So that doesn't make sense when it comes to the cost. This stuff, um, not this stuff, but when I looked at Premier One's hog netting, their least expensive hog netting was $1.13 a foot. And, of course, that includes the wire and the post and everything. Uh, it doesn't include your energizer, but $1.13 a foot, that adds up super quick when you're talking about doing, you know, 500, 1,000 linear feet of, uh, of fence line. So definitely not an option for us. So what posts are we going to use for the farm? What, uh, what are we going to decide to, to use here at Red Toolhouse with all these, these options we have? I can only do that just because everything's so wet around here. So... <laughs> I think what we're going to do in typical red toolhouse fashion is we're going to do a hybridization of all fence post options based upon our need in a specific area. There's another name for that that uh, since it's a family channel I won't mention it. But we've used locust posts before. In fact this whole line I'm standing in from is locust post. Obviously we've used T-post. I use the step-in post. Really haven't used a lot of rebar. But I have up in one of my barns I have a whole bunch of rebar from an old concrete project, 20 foot, various lengths. Uh, so probably cut some of that down and use it. I went ahead and bought my uh, my insulators here. So they're the uh, screw in type. They screw over uh, 3 eighths up to I think 5 eighths inch diameter pipe or steel. But here's something I want to show you that we may take advantage again of what we have, the plethora of material that Red Tool House is blessed with. This is gas slash oil pipe that we have all over our property. Again, if you've been on our channel, you'll know actually right behind me, the boys and I, just a couple weeks ago, were down here cutting a bunch of this. So this is a piece. So I cut this off at four feet just to see uh, how I could drive it into the ground with either a sledgehammer or, check this out, very excited. What? That slides right over there. So... My T-post driver can work on that gas pipe. So um, I have a, 
like I said, a, a variable cornucopia of this. I have miles, literally miles. Wouldn't you say, boys? Miles of it all over the property? Yeah. So there's literally miles of this all over the property. It's just a matter of getting it, cutting it, and uh, dragging it to a place. Obviously, there's some bends in it. Some of them have joints and valves and all that jazz. But I have a ton of this stuff. And we drove this in fairly easily. We started with the T-post driver. It worked fine. Switched to the sledgehammer to see if that would be any different. Not a problem. In fact, okay, so logical question. If we're going to use this, what about the fact that it's metal? How, how are we going to keep uh, electric from grounding out? Well, of course, we're going to attach an insulator. And I have these. I, I love these. Uh, get close up for that. Love these these double connect insulators they've got two screw holes and then they have a pin that drops in and I really like those they, they seem to uh, last a long time well for about three bucks i can get some self-tapping screws these are a little bit longer than i, I need them to be um i think i can get 50 or 100 for three or four dollars so what i can simply do of course is once i figure out the height of where i want this then i can just get my screw started we can just dog that down of course and put my second screw in and be fine the only delay I'll have is drilling through almost a quarter inch sidewall of that pipe but uh, self tappers will do it it's just a little bit of time involved so comment below what type of fence posts you like to use, what's your go-to for your pig pasture, uh, and then what you run into as far as issues associated with it or issues with other posts. But uh, like I said, we're going to document using the, uh, the pipe going forward because we have a ton of it and might as well cut it up. All right, take care, everybody.